Here's the app that's gonna make my first million dollars. I am very certain and very confident in seeing that statement because I think with this book and just the understanding that I had so far of you know numbers and stuff like that, it's gonna be pretty straightforward for me. The only thing I need to do is not be scared and take the step forward. And this app is gonna give me the actual confidence I need to understand what deals are I actually, you know cash flow and what deals are actually going to be profitable and things like that and so on this is a personal project but at the same time this is going to be an app what's going to you know set me apart from the next couple of years full statement hey welcome back to the channel as you can tell this is my vlog and yeah we're gonna go over the deal analysis out that i've been building for the last two vlogs and essentially it pretty much took me like eight hours to build everything in between those like vlogs i was like you know two hours there five hours here two hours here and the last part that i was working on was fixing up that last issue with the flows and stuff and essentially what i did to fix that is i just i just put it in code i just I put it in code like this is a personal project and one of the things that you know whenever you're doing your personal projects or anything like that is like you should continue to uh, try to focus on the things that you're interested in i really like doing the code pieces and code pieces is very interesting i think declarative stuff is you know very useful when it needs to be useful and you can get, definitely get the stuff done but sometimes it just takes so much longer and then uh, when you work in that way, then you can, you know, go into this realm of like your team to build things and just take way longer to build it out. So I just, you know, put in the code so I can, you know, bypass that little blocker thing that I was having with the record trigger flow and just put everything into Apex. So let's get into the demo of this app. I'm going to go into the desktop version right now because I'll probably show you another time I have a app version as well that's the cool thing about salesforce is like you build it one way you have different form factors that you can go into so when i'm not at my desk i'm on my phone and i'm out and about you know a realtor or a broker calls me up on my phone i can do my analysis right there on my phone and yeah that's gonna be a really cool thing so that's a little cool factor so far but other than that let's get into the demo here it is first part of this deal analysis app is the spreadsheet and you well not really a spreadsheet but a list view so this is the list view and here's a couple of fields i like to show at the very beginning which is the investment name which right now i just have it as a street address um, for whatever it is and then you have your net operating income the cash flow annually and then your cash flow monthly so Here's your monthly cash flow, your annual cash flow. That's gonna be really important because now I know for certain how much I can get every single year annually cash flow. And this is before taxes, so pre-tax. This is say I wanna create an investment. You know, a realtor calls me up, hey, I got this property for you, and let me give you some numbers. All right, cool. Where's the street address? Let's say it's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, Fairtail Lane. All right, cool. I know at the very beginning right now. So right now I have a section that says how much money would this investment make? And as you see, there's going to be more sections in there, like how much would I need to pay for this um, investment to make that particular cash flow? Those are going to be different fields that are going to be calculated as well. But right now, like I said, in a wide cash flow, I'm not going to change those fields. I'm an administrator, so I can see and edit these fields. With these fields, I have these like as read only in the background. But for right now, it's just that. All right. So the realtor is like, all right, cool. So this particular property is renting out at you know two thousand dollars per month per unit. And it's a multiplex, crazy numbers. Actually, let's, let's be more realistic. Let's do like, uh, let's do thirteen thirteen hundred per unit. All right, so I go here and go to my gross operating income thing and got my categories. Got the gross potential rent, gross potential rent, and you know it's 1500 1500 as i said these things are in the background we're going to get calculated after i can click save so you have your number of units you got two and they're both other units are renting out for 1500 click save boom that record gets created now you see the monthly is calculated as this 3000 and annually is calculated as 36000 does that automatically then when i go back to my investment tab right over here then you can see the net operating income right here as 36000 so this is without any of the expenses so far. So, you know, keep that in mind. These numbers are going to change when I add these different records on the right hand side 
operating expenses, debt services, and capital expenditures. I'm going to wait for that. Right now, this is what everything is with just the operating income. All right, so now he says, like, you might... Uh, with this current market, you might get, you know, maybe 1400 per unit. So then I have to go into my rent loss. I'm like, boom. Oh, man. All right. So market rate during that time was, you know, 1500 but it's moving too fast. It's going down. I'm going to have to, you know, draw it back to the actual. I'd probably get 1400 on it. So I have some other fields here as well. So vacancy. So I can see, you know, 0 to 12. I might actually make this a percentage instead of like saying, you know, one month or two months. I might say a certain percentage of the year that is going to be vacant. I might add that in here. So I'm going to add that and change that to a percentage. All right. So rent loss. This is just, you know, rent loss between the mar market rate and then the actual rate. So it's going to be a hundred dollars. Bad, bad debt. So that's just like essentially how much did, you know, if, you know, I have a tenant in there, they didn't pay me. So click save. Boom. So now we have vacancy is blank and the rent, the loss to lease, which is a hundred. We have no bad debt. Cool. It's all good. You can close these things out for now. Going back to the investment tab. Now we got some changes in the numbers. So at first it was 36,000. Now we have a reduction here of a hundred dollars um, for the cash flow. It was at 3,000 is a reduction of rent loss of 100 because that actual rate of the of, of the on the market right now is 1,400. So we, we had to get in there with the tenants. So we were able to rent those out. So we got a reduction there. Let's see. And then so the next thing we're going to get into, um, we also have some other stuff like, you know, other income. I'm going to go into this little piece as well. So the other thing about this, so like you got parking, you got storage income, you got laundry income. So like, for example, if the place didn't come with like a, with like washer and dryer, you can rent out a washer and dryer to them. Let's just say I'm going to rent out a washer and dryer to them $25 a month that they're staying there. Oh, and I also have a little storage um, unit on the property. Hey, let's, let's do, um, let's do $50 per Per month on that as well. Parking, we're good. You don't need parking. They're good. They they got they can park on the street. All right. So now I'm gonna calculate that seventy five dollars gonna be per month and then times that by twelve, wherever that is. I don't have a calculator. You get nine hundred. Now going back to this. All right, we got you know increasing our cash flow and increasing our in a lot. Well, now the realtor is like cool. Now the expenses like all right. So property taxes. You gonna have to pay roughly around you know one hundred and twenty five dollars a month for property taxes. All right, that's cool. All right, so that's gonna come up to fifteen hundred a year in property taxes. Going back to it. All right, we also have another expense as well. All right, home insurance is going to be roughly around $80, $80 a month. There you go. Boom, going to give me $960. Uh, yeah, uh, I can see that. I can see that. All right, $960 annually. All right, cool. Oh, now we have a little reduction. As you see, more and more as we go by, this is getting decreased, decreased, decreased. More stuff is coming in. The operating expenses should be decreasing from the cash flow and also decreasing from the operating income as well. All right. So we got one more thing, property management fees. Oh, I mean, typically for me, I'm going to like, I'm starting out as a real, real, real estate investor. So I might actually try to manage it for the first year to see what I can get from it. And what's the, the whole entire process of that, dealing with tenants and what their needs are, just to, you know, get familiar with the industry. I ain't going to, you know, shove it off to a property manager right away. But in this particular case, let's just say we have a property management. It's going to be roughly around like 10% of the gross income. So we got 1400 so that's 28 So it's going to be 280 Got that. That's in there. Getting 280 and we got that for the property tax. Let's see. Do we have anything else that we need to consider? Repairs and maintenance. Let's just say, you know, $60 per month. That's going to be our repair and maintenance for, for the property. $720 a year. The band that messed up my property. I'll tell you what. If they spend over seven, $720 a year, we got a problem. All right. So, cool. Now, I think that's good. Let's see if we have any more expenses. That utilities are going to be taken care of. But if we need to, we can add that category. Lawn stuff is going to be taken care of by the tenant. We good accounting. We'll see about that. Cool. Now we have that. Now we're gonna go into the debt service. So this is exactly what it is. It's just a mortgage payment. Mortgage payment is gonna be roughly around nine hundred dollars. This is not including taxes in the insurance. Let's do two sixty. Just say that. So mortgage payment is gonna be two sixty 
a month. Our taxes and insurance is coming out for our operating expenses. We got that. Mortgage is going to be $960 per month. All right, cool. All right, so that's going to be $11,520 a year. Okay, we can, we can do that easy. Let's see how let's see how our cash flow looking. We're looking still we're looking pretty good. Still looking pretty good. So we had a thousand monthly. So we're getting cash flow from this property of a thousand dollars and four hundred and seventy dollars. This is why I think I like I love the the multiplexes and stuff. All right, so uh, all right, so all right, so another thing I added into this. So going to the capital expenditures, as you see, you know you got your roof replacement predefined, or HVAC predefined, um, plumbing system predefined, and the years to replace these items predefined here on this page. These are just numbers that I found on the internet. How often will you have to replace a roof? Roughly around 25 years. HVAC is you know roughly around 15 years, and plumbing system roughly around 50 years, even to a, a hundred years, depending on what kind of material it is. So you know this is. Going going to break down monthly and annually so like typically you know in taxes and stuff like that uh, capital expenditures aren't really included this is just the cost coming down the line as the house you know it gets um becomes de degraded so you know it starts to degrade so you got to replace these items these big ticket items and yeah just just know that so these big 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 items that you want to pay for and you want to keep track of that and make sure that that's the case let's just say like all right they just they had this hvac system for like five years already i'm going to change that up we're going to put that to 10 years the roofing they just got it done so i'm expecting 25 years so they just got it done 25 years and we we'll have to worry about it in 25 years plumbing um, this house is roughly around like 20 years old. So, you know, say 30. I'm going to replace it in 30 years. So, when we do the calculations in the background, all right, it's going to be $145, you know, monthly, and then uh, $1,740. So, all this stuff is in the background getting getting done. It's good. I don't have to do any of the calculations. This is just, you know, improving my productivity as I'm analyzing a deal and I can do it on hand like right away when I'm talking to like brokers and realtors. All right, so now let's look at this property now. Boom, oh my goodness, this thing is cash flowing over $1,325 per month. Amazing, fantastic. Oh, so something happened recently. So the gross potential rent, uh, the realtor is off and the market actually is less than the amount that it's supposed to. So we're going back to that and we want to change that around. Instead of 1500 is actually 1100 Come on, Chad. What, what's going on, man? What what changed? What changed so much? Oh, uh, there it was you don't have like this particular appliance or this particular like upgrade on your property and just you know I have a reduction on each part of the units, four hundred dollars. That's that's what happened, man. Is if you upgrade it, then it's gonna be costing you like roughly around ten thousand. You can do that or um, do the stuff. You luckily I don't get I won't get that on my calculator yet, but I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what happens when I change these values. All right, so instead of that thousand dollars, I'm getting five hundred twenty five dollars cash flow on this property, and we we can just say we can cancel out this the rent loss here as well. So I'm gonna get rid of the rent loss and delete it. So when I delete it, it should be six hundred twenty five dollars cash flow monthly. All right, I'm about to delete it. All right, and updates. So I did the I did the crew actions, whatever you know stuff happens. It's like when it updates, the deletes, and all that stuff. I made sure that it will recalculate the cash flow, recalculate the, the net operating income, and you know get all those values. That's good, and you know I don't have to like go back and like oh boom there it is. And the, another reason why I I did this app is because I just like to represent data differently. So like I would rather have the data that the main metric stuff that I need to look at in this one form right there so I can look at it when I come to the screen. It's mainly from like a user standpoint. I was just really tired of the spreadsheets and I had to stroll all the way to the right, stroll all the way to the left and change that value, stroll all the way to the right, stroll all the way to the left to change that value. I was like, ah, dang, that's just super annoying. So 
that's, that's one of the reasons why I built this app is like, boom, I can just delete stuff there, change values here. It's just a representation and the visual of the data that helps me out a lot. Hey, hey, still cash flowing, $625. Oh, that's great. That's great. So yeah, as as you can see, it's like, I mean, this is pretty much the end of the demo, but you know, there's, there's more stuff that I plan on adding to this app pretty soon. Like probably in the next couple of days, but this is the MVP that I need to figure out the cash flow. I need to at least cash flow a certain amount on this property. I don't want to be taking money out of my pocket while I'm working with a deal. Like that's not ideal. Even if I'm thinking in the long run, that's that's cool if I can cash flow roughly around two hundred dollars. Like during this particular time in the market where prices are going down and interest rates are going up, it's like I'd rather have a price reduction on a property and high interest rates than having a high property and low interest rate. And when when the when that switches, the property value goes down and I'm underwater. That's that's just my thought process behind it. It's just it just makes sense to me to buy a lower price house, high interest rate, and then be able to refinance that into a lower interest rate later on. Then I can actually actually you know cash flow better. So that's just my thought process. That's how I'm looking at it. But this is the app that's gonna essentially make my first million. I already hit a financial goal that I need to get to um, be financial free and. I'm trying to hit those milestones and you know a million dollars is just one of those milestones but it's further out there's other financial um, milestones I'm trying to hit before a million dollars but I think this is the app that's going to essentially help me out as you see like I even have it on my phone like I said before I love it do the same exact things that I need to do as on the app it's just a different experience and but just it just it just works it just works and that's what i love so hope you guys enjoyed that video i hope i inspired you to actually do your own personal projects that you know gives you give you purpose like this is a, this is a project that i have purpose behind it's like i have a reason for doing it i continue to preach in regards to any personal project do something that you you know you want to solve a problem of yourself i continue to build apps that way have a pur purpose behind it you know do it that way so it can help you out and help yourself out so make your life you know more you know efficient and maybe you never know <laughs> this app could be your money maker or something like that maybe someone else had the same issue and problem and you might be solving their problem as well and i kind of look at it as there's like apps at scale so i i kind of mentioned this app already to some of my family and my friends and stuff and they're looking into you know actually wanting this app as well and, you know, I'm always, always, you know, continues to share my experience and just share like my, my process and the development and stuff like that. I don't really care if anyone takes the ideal for the most part. There's certain ideals I do care about. I probably won't share those. But this ideal, I think, is like, you know, people do it already. They do, they do it on spreadsheets already. So this is just you know, in a different form factor. And also when I think of, you know, sharing ideals as well, it depends because, you know, you, you got to look at who you're sharing it to. Some people have the and know how in the in the in the ability to do it. I think anyone can do this right here, to be honest, if they really wanted to. I had the vision behind the app and have where I wanted to take it to. So I don't really care about this app in particular. Because um there's other apps out there. There's other companies who are actually doing this thing already on Salesforce and I'm just a person just actually showing it. Other than that, you know, hope you guys enjoyed that video. I see you guys next time and I plan on doing more videos in this December month just to, uh, you know, share my experience, share my advice in regards to software engineering before the end of this year because I have a goal of sharing stuff and I have a video coming up pretty soon. So, you know, make sure you guys check that out next week and peace out.